Hey, what's up everybody? 3D Theory here. It is still August 11th again, and this is vlog number 33. And I am still out of town. I should be coming back today. So I filmed all of this on the same day, three intros. But today, too, we will be jumping back in the computer. I'll see you guys in Maya. All right, so let's move on to the next piece on the list. And that is the cylindrical piece of wood. And did I get measurements for the wood? Yep, it's a uh, 292 millimeters wide. So let's grab that measuring cube and do 292 millimeters wide. And this may have to be adjusted later um, because of the width of the legs. So, and I'm gonna go ahead and get the thickness of that cylinder, the diameter rather. All right, the diameter is about 15 millimeters. So instead of 20 here, I'm gonna do 15 millimeters. There you have it. And over here in side view, I'm gonna turn off this grid because I don't need it and get this wireframe mode. And honestly, I don't need these uh, this information here. So I'm just gonna go over to display, heads up display and turn poly count off. Okay. Now I'm gonna get a cylinder here and it's looking real tiny, <laughs> but um, it's right there. I need the center of this uh, measuring cube, so I'm gonna click a face, do shift, right mouse button, poke face. And so now we have the center of one face, which is most likely this side, nope, this side here. And that's just gonna be helpful for my cylinder. So I could just pop that in the middle and make it larger in this 90 degrees. And I'm gonna get it to about where it needs to be at 15 millimeters. And we wanna create a hexagonal shape. So we got our hexagonal shape there. And I do want to rotate it so that it's flat up top. And I held J and it snapped it in increments. So you can kind of um, rotate in increments here. And I think the increments are in 15 degrees, yeah. So bringing that back there, now I can kind of increase this as needed. I kind of want this to be a little bit bigger because of the material we're using, but let's also try to get it accurate. So 86.692, what about, and I'll just do 86.61, and there you go. That seems perfect, right, honestly. So we can just turn the measuring cube off and take a look at what we've got. That's great. That is looking exactly the way I wanted it to look. And now we want to make it the correct width. And to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab these verts, turn on wireframe on shaded so I can see the edge there. And I'm just gonna bring it on over. Same with this side. And turn off measuring cube. All right, we got our center bar. So we're getting there, guys. We're right where we need to be. This would, in its standing position, be close to the user. So it's probably gonna be sitting about, snap that vert and bring it right at the edge. It'll be sitting right about there. And let's go to side view here. And it would be right up top, right over here. Okay, that's looking good. Very nice. All right, let's see what we got next on the design. We got the bottom support bar. We got assembly screws. Um, I think I'm gonna leave that for later and let's jump straight to the metal holder wire. So the metal holder wire is in the center here. And the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna throw this in the tabletop and create a reference. I'm gonna duplicate this and also throw it in there so that I have one that I can play with over here. All right, so I wanna create a square here. So let's bevel that. I'm gonna to try to get it to look as square as possible. All right, that's looking like a square to me. And I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this out. And let's see, what's a good thickness that I feel like would be strong? I'd say five millimeters is a good thickness that I feel like it wouldn't snap as PETG. But just to be on the safe side, let's make it eight millimeters. Eight millimeters would be nice, and I feel like it wouldn't even consider snapping at that point. So I got my measuring cube over here, 
Let me actually select it, select objects, and I'm gonna do eight millimeters. There you have it. So that's an eight millimeter thickness that I wanna make this be. I'm gonna grab that and give it that eight millimeter thickness. That is actually very thick and I feel comfortable that that's gonna um, be very supportive. And likewise, I'm going to now bring this forward a bit as it's shown in the design here. We're gonna create this now and then we're gonna go ahead and create that center part. So that looks about right. Let me go over to side view and it doesn't have to be too exaggerated. I think that's looking good there. I'm just gonna bring it forward here to the center. All right, that center bar is looking real hefty. Is it too hefty? Maybe, <laughs> we'll find out. Um, but it's PETG and um, I want it to be real strong. I would honestly like to make it a little thinner to give it like a sleeker look, which you know what? I will, because now that I remember, there's a design here that I can add that extra three millimeters to. So for that reason, I'm gonna go back to my side view, turn on that measuring cube, and I'm gonna make that five. I'm gonna bring its orientation to the top here, bring that back up there, and select these. And by the way, I click tab to give me this circular selection which allows me to just click once and just scroll the mouse and it'll select anything I want it to select. But we just need those for this. I'm gonna grab this orientation and vertex snap it here so that I can make it exactly five millimeters there. Turn off measuring cube. And now I want to create this cool little design here. So all we gotta do is create that center part there and bring it out. And since this is one piece and we don't need it to be one piece, I just kind of use this center part as a reference to create this part, I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything else. And I'm gonna click, I'm gonna select all those faces, including the top ones here. And I'm gonna click shift and drag and delete. And now we have the reference one there. So if I turn that off, you'll see it. I'm gonna go ahead and select all the edges, fill hole. So now that's filled. And now I'm gonna go ahead and create a center line. And I'm gonna grab these vertices and just bring them out. I'm gonna bring it out pretty exaggerated for now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab this edge and bevel it. And as you can see here, it's kind of a small bevel. So I'm gonna bring that in. How's that looking in comparison? Well, it's a little wider. Maybe I can bring it in just a little bit more. There you go. All right, I like the way that's looking, but remember, I do wanna create this to be eight millimeters. So I'm gonna grab my measuring cube again and do eight millimeters here and bring that up. It's just past eight millimeters and I did that intentionally. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this part and I'm gonna bring my orientation, my pivot there to be able to snap it to that cube. And this is looking good. All right, so now that I like the way this looks, I'm gonna go ahead and as you can see, the pivot is right in the center and we need to just duplicate special over in Z, that blue, as you can find here as well. And it's already in Z, so I'm gonna go ahead and just click Apply, grab these two, mesh, combine, grab that center, merge vertices, merge vertices. There you have it. All right, we got the makings of that metal holder wire, that center bar, and now I feel like we can work on the legs. Now I wanna go ahead and create these legs. So I'm gonna check the measurements. So the inner leg and the outer leg both are 695 millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a cube. Do the 10 as usual, and we're gonna do a height of 695. And according to my measurements here, the thickness is 22 by 20. So I assume the thickness is 
20 and the width is 22. So let's do width of 22 and the depth of 20. If we were to just rotate this 90 degrees, this is how the legs would sit over here. And this feels really tall <laughs> because it's not rotated. But we're gonna do all that uh, rotating later. I'm gonna hide the tabletop and I wanna start working on the design here. And as you can see, we got our cool little design going on over here. And I'm gonna start building out that shape. So I'm gonna grab this leg. I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half because I only wor wanna work on one half, make life a little easier for me when it comes to this 3D designing business. And I'm gonna select these two edges and bevel it. Now we're gonna bevel as far down as we can without losing too much. But I feel like this is actually pretty wide. So I'm gonna keep it about that wide. And I'm gonna grab these edges and bring that down. Let me take a look at the reference. That's looking good so far. So I'm gonna select all the edges here. And I'm gonna do bevel. I'm gonna turn off chamfer so it doesn't give that, that diagonal line. And now we can work with this center here. According to the design, looks like that. I did make this a little longer because I do like that look. So <clears throat> with that being said, I think this looks good. We don't need this line. And I'm actually gonna create a center line here so that we can play with the shape a little bit later. I'm gonna grab this. And I'm going to bring it out a tad bit until I feel like it looks cool to my eye. All right, that feels real cool there. Um, but now, as you can tell, it got much thicker than we had originally intended. And I think it was at about 22. So let me grab this measuring cube and see if it's at 22. Let me modify center pivot to get that pivot back in the center and bring it up to the edge. There you go. Okay, actually this was at 20, the width was 22, and there you have it. So yeah, as you can tell, it was at 20 right there, but we brought it out a bit to accommodate the design, and I'm just going to bring that back. Okay, hide that measuring cube, and there you go. Let me turn off that and see how that looks. Now in Maya, you can play with normals, and by the way, what a normal is, is the way light bounces off an object and so if I had a let's say a light source right here and it was throwing a light here on this edge where would it reflect off the object in what direction and to show you exactly which direction the normals are facing in we're going to click on our object we're going to go over here to the shape node mesh component display and display normal I'm going to increase the size here to five and as you can see when a light hits this surface the light normal well the angle it shoots off the object is here and likewise with all those other spikes coming out of there looks a bit like a cactus but we don't need to see that and the reason why i bring it up is because we see it smooth over here so i'm going to go over to mesh display and i'm just going to click harden edge so now we can see that look we're going to be going for in the 3d printed version so it looks real angular and I call it that stealth look. We could also call it the geometric look. All right, now that we have this look going on, do I want to play with this here? Maybe angle it a little bit this way so it has this cool look. I don't think so. That's not something I intend on doing. Also, I just noticed if we go over to the side here, if we go over to the front rather, um, we can see that this edge kind of tilts down like that and I don't like that so I'm going to go ahead and grab these and just straighten it out so it looks straight and it has a straight edge all right you know what I'm liking the way that's looking so I'm going to go ahead and this time duplicate special in Y I reset that and do it in Y duplicate special and now we have the makings of our leg mesh combine and I'm going to merge those verts so that's one. I'm just going to double check. Oh, it didn't work this time. I wonder why. Let's go to display, polygon, custom polygon display. Grab those vertices and merge the verts. Nope, it's not working. That means that these are ever so slightly off their position. 
but it doesn't look to be that way. Let's increase the threshold to 0 0.001, and that worked. Okay, now it is one object. Very nice. So we're going to need four of these legs, but I'll create it when it's ready to be created. And we're almost there, actually. We just have a few more things we need to 3D model. A couple, rather. We just need this bottom support bar and these assembly screws. Hey guys, so we're almost finished with that 3D file. We just got a little bit longer to go. I wanted to break it down into small chewable chunks and hopefully it's easy to follow along. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, peace, love, and joy.